Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we pledge allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, dignity and justice for all. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Over 80,000 unaccounted for veterans 
members of the Armed Forces of South Carolina, South Carolina County Court. For many families to thank their sorrow, grieving, because they don't know where their loved ones are. We pray, Lord, that you'll put your arms around them. Lord, and bless them and take care of them, love them. Again, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this part. We want it to stand for, not only today, but from now on, as we honor each and every one that has served, many that gave their life. And we honor them today. And that's what it's all about, Lord. We pray that you just be with each and every one. Thank you for the ones that's taken the mission to see that this accomplished. We all ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. This is the part you've been waiting for. You may be seated. <laughs> Welcome to Honor Park, a tribute to those who serve. Serve. That's what we're about. Serve. This place before you was created by the Fort Oglethorpe Veteran and Citizens, a volunteer nonprofit organization over four years took a place that was a swamp and turned it in to what you see before you. They had a vision, and this vision included service. Many, many long hours of service. The service began not with just strong backs, but it also was people who were inspired, people who talked, people who went out, people who sought. We received donations, including these beautiful lamp poles from North Georgia Electric, IBEW, our flagpole, Tennessee American Water, volunteer their employees on their clock to come work. Many, many corporate sponsors, many individuals who said, Paula, can't do a lot. Doesn't matter. Come on. But what is service? We use that word, service. I looked it up. It's a noun, an act of helpful activity. The supplying or supplier of utilities or commodities, water, electric, gas, required by, the, by our public. How about an adjective? Delivery people. A verb, to make fit for use, repair. None of these dictionary definitions seem to fit my understanding of what service meant. When we look at an individual and ask, did you serve? Well, the general comprehension of that is military. Upon receiving the word yes, we graciously thank that individual and we show our appreciation, admiration, and our respect. However, there are many other forms of service. What makes the service attitude begin? Where does it start? Is it something that emerges upon graduation from high school? Boom. All of a sudden, they have to serve its heart? No. Does it magically appear when there is a crisis? Is it a genetics? Is it inborn? Or is it a learned trait? Something for which we as adults are responsible for modeling, teaching our youth. How does one learn this valuable skill? Is it an adult-only activity? Maybe gender-related. Or do you have to be a certain size? Or just maybe. This innate ability begins with the most minute of opportunity to observe another in the act of service. For instance, these are the young ladies of Girl Scout Troop 40347. Listen to the promise they make to us.
Talk to us about law. There's a law on which they base this promise, and it says, I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do to respect myself and others and respect authority. Use resources wisely. Make the world a better place and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Thank you, ladies. My friends, I ask you, where does service start? Let that be the rhetorical question in your heart. As you hear these words from voice and song, consider where your servant's heart begins and the impact you have as a model for our future. Everybody can do something. Nobody can do everything. God bless you all, and thank you for spending your valuable time with us today. I now welcome Ms. Stacy Rasher of Building the Blue Bridge. celebrated National Police Week, and in particular today is Peace Officer Memorial Day. We pay tribute to the brave men and women of law enforcement who lost their lives in the line of duty. In 2020, there were 362 officers who made that ultimate sacrifice. This morning, it is my honor to read the names of the 20 Georgia law enforcement officers who gave their lives and the duty of protecting our community. Deputy Sheriff Sheldon Gordon Whitman. Deputy Sheriff Kentrose Taylor. Deputy Warden Roger Joe Hodge Sr. Police Officer Christopher Eric Ewing. Investigator James McConcha. Deputy Sheriff Stephen Allen Minor. Deputy Sheriff William R. Garner. Lieutenant Brian K. McNair. Chief Probation Officer Leslie Dale Allen. Deputy Sheriff Philip Cortobus. Deputy Sheriff Stephen Bradley Crazy Wolf Dutton. Special Deputy Marshal Anthony Charles McGrew. Correction Officers Onchi Sunday Ikendoe. Captain Stanley Curtis Elrod. Sergeant Charles Edward Norton. Deputy Sheriff Anthony Lamar White. Deputy Sheriff Kenny B. Ingram. Corporal Avery D. Hillman. Captain Philip Edward Street. Deputy Jailer Jane Alice Ash. And Sergeant Patrick David Snook. In honor of these brave men and women who sacrificed Join me in a brief moment of silence.
Thank you very much. And I'll turn it over to Jerry. I'd like to thank all the veterans that are here today and the ones that are not here and the ones that cannot be here. If it weren't for these brave people, we would not be able to stand under that proud flag over there and do what we want to do when we want to do it. All right. With uh, this in mind, when you hear your uh, banner being played, please stand, veterans. Ready for the call, we place our trust in Thee. Through surf and storm and howling gale, I shall our purpose keep. Semper Paratus is our guide, our favor, glory to. To fight, to stay, or fight, and die, I must stand we are for you. ourselves, but when it comes time to find somebody else, we're all standing together. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Heyman. Let's take a moment. Police officers, our law enforcement, please stand. Be acknowledged. If you're in law enforcement. Department, emergency medical, please stand. You keep us safe. <laughs> Service, it takes all. We know the Fort Oglethorpe Veteran and Citizens Council put this part together with a special reason. That flag. 
It's the center. Notice around that flag. The trees that surround the flag are those of the branches of the United States military. For without them, as Chief Amon said, we wouldn't be here. They are placed foremost because they protect that flag. Across fire, police, emergency medical, all the other support, including the citizen tree, which is the tallest tree, because the citizens number more. But those few protect all. Make sure you thank them every chance you get. They're while we're here. Now this will take a while. As you guys know, not only a politician, but an English teacher. So I promise you'll all be home by six o'clock for dinner. <laughs> Fair? Fair. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Because this was a tough one. I worked on this till 11.30 last night, and I'm still not sure I got all of this lady's accomplishments. But here goes. Her service resume began as a Red Cross candy striper. Remember the youth? Her service began. Several years later, she obtained a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from my alma mater, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Gone to James, go Mox! Go Mox! <laughs> a model of service to her only child. She inspired her son to become a graduate of West Point, and he has gone on to a fabulous career from that. Starts when they're young. Then, she went on to Emory University School of Nursing. She earned a master's and specialist degrees there in family and community health. And not to slow down her service to others, she earned the position as Associate Chief Nurse at Memphis Veteran Affairs Medical Center, VAMC. She didn't stop there. Her service did not go unnoticed by Washington, D.C. They called, and of course, she answered. She responded, becoming the Director, Office of Military Liaison and Veterans Affairs, in the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Health of the Department of Health and Human Services, where her assignment was to establish the Medical Reserve Corps. Another organization she eventually served as director. 9-11 brought challenges to this country. Most of us remember. And those who served met those challenges willingly. They stepped up to the plate. So did our keynote. Stationed at the nation's, cap nation's capital in response to 9-11, but also the anthrax exposure event. Some of us older, we remember that as well. She held fast to serve. She didn't budge. She served. She went on assignments with the FDA, CDC, Health and Human Services, led to a consultant position with the Republic of Rwanda's Ministry of Health in order to rebuild the health infrastructure after their civil war in the 1990s. Not only did the United States of America treasure this servant, people throughout the world knew about her service abilities. And she served. She earned her doctorate from a humble little place, Vanderbilt. University. You've heard of it. <laughs> While still on military active duty in the United States Army. Think of all those excuses. Well, I don't have time. I've, I've heard them all as a, as a high school teacher. And she served during the first Gulf War. Finally, late in the year of 2012, she decided to retire as a full bird colonel. 
and move home to Chattanooga so that she could slow down a bit. Kick back a little, she'd earned it, right? So she becomes a part-time teacher at Vanderbilt University. And then she says, eh, I got a few minutes. She volunteered at the Chattanooga VA outpatient clinic while contributing to the Tennessee Valley Veterans Affair Health Systems Veteran and Family Advisory Council. She wasn't busy enough, apparently. That servant's heart was still beating strong. Slowed down, retiring. It's not her game plan. She's a servant. She has that heart. When Chattanooga Mayor Tim Kelly announced his senior leadership team, guess who fulfilled one of his first priorities of office? Yeah. She got that call and she responded to serve again. The new director of community health in Chattanooga, an accomplished leader with ties to public health for half a century. Join me as I welcome someone with a servant's heart, our keynote speaker, Dr. Mary Lambert. Good morning. Absolutely a pleasure and a privilege to be here. And we couldn't have picked a better, we could not have picked a better morning, a better forecast for this uh, for this event. Um, thank you so much, Council Lady Stennis. I wish I had that uh, introduction recorded. <laughs> uh, There's probably one of the best ones I've gotten. Thank you so much. Okay, good. I need that. Okay, I'm like, Start passing out to folks. Um, it is an honor indeed to be here. It was absolutely an honor to be asked to serve here. I was not aware that this honor park was here. Uh, it was a nice tour with Council Lady Stennett uh, a few weeks back and uh, was just totally impressed. So I will be back and I will continue to contribute um, to this effort as much as I can. So, so just get used to seeing my face. I um, want to acknowledge the folks who are here um, and just again, just let you know how much I appreciate being able to talk about honoring those who serve and about my service. Um, thank you again, Council Lady Stennett. I believe Council Lady James is also here. Just want to acknowledge you and, and thank you very much. Um, and then most especially want to acknowledge my fellow veterans, their family members, and then most especially our Gold Star wives, um, those who are here. Um, thank you again. I cannot thank you enough. Uh, I do have a, the most, um, the highest compliment that I receive is when someone calls me a servant. I am a servant. That is the way I was raised from the time I was very young. We're supposed to serve. We're supposed to help. It's probably why I went into healthcare and into nursing. So that, that's my highest compliment to call me a servant. You can call me anything else. Um, you know, doctor, colonel, um, director, but to call me a servant, that's bringing tears to my eyes right now. Uh, so I thank you for that. My family has a very long history of service to America, and I'll try not to be too long because it is warm. I'm happy that most of you are in the shade, but I'm in a black suit with a long sleeve. Right through, so that's probably your insurance that I won't go two hours. I could, but I won't. Um, my family has a very long history of service. Um, Council Lady Stennett mentioned some of it. Um, I'll have to mention some of it because I'm so proud of them and they were my examples many times for the reason that I decided I needed to serve as well. My mother's young brother, um, is he's deceased now, but he's, he was retired Army. He was a um, Army Airborne uh, Master Jump Wings, um, served in the uh, Korean War. Uh, he was actually one of the first African-American 
uh, paratroopers um, who, interestingly, used to give lectures to West Point cadets when he was at Fort Campbell as, a, as an airborne person. Um, and it's so interesting. He was so delighted when my son was accepted at West Point, uh, and my son followed on and did that same kind of training. So the son, you know, so the, the, my, my, my uncle, my, uh, some of my mother's uh, cousins, we do represent all of the branches, and we also represent the servants who are members of police and fire. We have policemen in the family. Uh, my brother-in-law is a retired firefighter captain from Chattanooga. My, one of my nephews is a, is a firefighter. Um, and then we, again, we, we represent all the branches. I can't think of a branch that we're not in. And by the way, there are seven uniformed services. Um, I was fortunate enough to have been able to serve and had the privilege of serving in a couple of them as well as uh, in the Army Reserves. I was commissioned as an 01 butter bar, for those of you who know that term, in 1979 at a reserve unit here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I just went on from there. Um, I feel so privileged to have had the opportunity to serve in a reserve unit at the VA at Erlanger, um, clinical time at Park Ridge Memorial. Um, my heart is to serve people, to help people, to take care of people. Um, and that brings such benefits, and I think that's what the message we need to give to our young folks. Serving others brings so many, you're not looking for the benefit, but serving others brings so much in the way of benefits to you. Um, that if we can continue that message with our young folks, I think we'll be in good shape. Um, so my family has a huge history of service. My history of service, again, has been civil service, um, local health care agencies, um, I've been often referred to as a um, triple or quadruple threat because I've had VA, DOD, HHS, Homeland Security, and a few other um, opportunities to serve. And it's been quite a privilege and have learned all along the way. Best education is not necessarily in a university, although I do encourage that, but it's in the experience that we get when we're out serving, working, and continuing to learn. My service did get me to the White House. Uh, to set up a national program uh, for President Bush at the, um, uh, shortly after the 9-11 attack, setting up a um, volunteer medical reserve for unit as part of the USA Freedom Corps office for President Bush um, because we needed a way to organize volunteers, another way to serve, uh, volunteering. And, I, and I, even when I re retired, I decided to just continue to do the volunteer work as well as teach. I just figured I had enough to enough experience that I might be able to help students learn a bit more about potential opportunities, that kind of thing. Uh, because there's nothing that should stop any of us and any of our young folks from um, serving in so many different areas. If you had told me when I was a little girl in public school in Chattanooga, Tennessee, that I would one day serve in the White House alongside the President of the United States, I really would not have believed you. I'm not sure any of my family would have believed it because I was a crybaby. <laughs> um, so, but you know, you, the sky's the limit. You just need to continue to serve and to learn and, and to move on. I want to take a little bit of time to make some comments about just regarding honoring those who serve, who are serving now, or those who have served. Um, there's a why of honoring those who serve. There's the how. Um, we absolutely must serve those, uh, honor those who have served and who are serving. And I believe we always will. That's just the way this country is made. We appreciate and we honor those who serve in whatever capacity, whether that's police, fire, um, emergency response, medical, military, active duty military, even in areas of research, which is so needed. Um, we always will serve those individuals. We have to we have to honor those individuals because we because they deserve it. They absolutely deserve it for the sacrifices they've made, for the families, for the sacrifices that their families have made. Um, many of you probably are aware of the of the challenges when one is either you know, firefighter, police. Um, active duty, deployments, etc. the sacrifices that families have to make. 
But those are the kinds of things that those individuals choose to do, and those are great examples for our young people to see so that we can continue the line of service. And it's that line of service that supports this nation and has made this nation the greatest nation in the world. And I think we'll continue that as long as we remember that and teach that to the folks, the young folks, while they're in school. And we have to start when they're young. We're so happy to see the Girl Scouts here. That was just wonderful. That's where it starts. Um, I didn't realize that when I had on a little candy striper outfit in, um, I think it was seventh grade. <laughs> and I worked at Park Ridge and you know, I was at Park Ridge and at Memorial. And all I was doing was delivering flowers and uh, mail to the patients, but the patients were so appreciative. And there was something about doing something for somebody that they appreciated. And then I saw the nurses and how they cared for the patients and the doctors. And that's when I decided, well, I think I'm going to do that too. Um, so it's, it builds, it continues to build. Um, but we need to put ourselves in places where we and our young folks can see that kind of service and what it brings to our lives. Um, I also have to say, and I left out one of my appreciations, and that's to all of you as taxpayers, all of my education was a benefit of my service or a benefit of your tax dollars. <coughs> the U.S. Public Health Service paid for my advanced, back, advanced practice degree and uh, certification at in the university. So I paid, so you all paid for that. My doctorate at Vanderbilt was paid for in full by the GI Bill, post 9 11 GI Bill. Um, and as a matter of fact, there's still uh, some of that benefit left over, and you'll see this, you'll see this lady back in school again because I intend to use that benefit that the taxpayer so generously provided for me. Um, I often tell people who ask, why are you doing all of this? Why did you accept the mayor's um, offer, the mayor's request that you assist with setting up this new office? I tell them, I retired from active duty. I did not retire from service. And the nursing license will not be retired. Um, I had somebody laughing the other day because I said, you'll be trying that nursing license from my cold dead hand. Because <laughs> I, I intend to continue to use it. I intend to continue to serve my community, my nation, all of you, your families. As far as I'm concerned, that's what I'm put on earth to do. And I'm going to continue to do that. Um, I do think the how of honoring those who serve and um, who are serving or have served is for all of us to do. And that's in not just the comments that you make, it's really great when folks say, um, thank you for your service. I am so I am so grateful for that. I love hearing that. But I think we need to really think about what sacrifice they have made for us and what we can do as citizens, whether that's a volunteer effort, whether that's uh, working or contributing to some of the, for example, some of the veteran service organizations, the VA, those kinds of things, so that we show them that we honor them by what we do for them. Um, encouraging our young folks to uh, see them as role models for the kinds of things that they could do, that they can do, to serve their community, their country, um, so, that so that they become servants as well. Um, now that the, the wind has started blowing a little bit, it feels cooler. I might keep going for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I don't. I didn't want to keep you very long. It's a beautiful day. I want us to have time to, you know, to just mingle and chat with each other um, and look at this beautiful, beautiful park. Um, I don't know whether it's permissible. I'm going to hang around for a while, um, but I'm happy if I need to stay up here to answer questions about some of my assignments, my service, that kind of thing. I love talking about it, but I warn you, I can talk for a while about where I've been and the kinds of things I've done, because it's been a pure pleasure, pure pleasure, and I, I'm thoroughly excited about the opportunity that I've gotten to work with the mayor of Chattanooga on this new um, new office and to work with the new administration. Um, so with that, I won't keep you any longer. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But not up here. Over in the show. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I told you she was amazing. Another amazing service. Is that Marvin Garner? 
state of Georgia, representative from Purple Heart, Marvin Garner has joined us. Sir, if you will. The very first tree planted in Honor Park is the Purple Heart tree, which is right up here by the bridge. I hope you will take time and walk by the trees. Think about what this tree means to not just Fort Oglethorpe, not just Catoosa County, not just Georgia, not just the United States, but in your service throughout the world. Some have gone to service in other countries, but they have yet to return. We pray every day that eventually they are back home. I know my family has been praying, and my uncle Ed has come home. And we should learn that in another month, perhaps. But carrying that torch and making sure that they are not forgotten, their sacrifice, their service, not forgotten. My dad's best friend comes here. It's not forgotten. We are blessed to have with us today Rolling Thunder TN2. You're ready to cry. It's not a shame. Not an embarrassment. Those tears are shed for people we love and who love us enough to make the supreme sacrifice. I welcome now my friend and colleague, Ollie Schmidt. On it Ray Britt. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ollie Short. Rolling Thunder, Tennessee 2, will be performing a Missing Man, Children Action Table, and Flag Folding Ceremony. We ask that you silence your phones at this time and remain silent during the ceremony. Today, we have some honored guests who cannot be with us that deserve to be honored with our attention and respect. Please direct your attention to the table and place setting in front. This ceremony calls for designating a missing man killed in action place setting as a physical symbol for thousands of Americans that are still unaccounted for from all foreign conflicts and the thousands of Americans that were killed in action during these conflicts. May we all be reminded to spare no effort in securing the release of any American prisoners of war from captivity. The repatriation of the remains of those who died bravely in defense of liberty and a full accounting of those still missing in action. I will now explain the symbolism of the POW MIA place setting. The table. The table is small, symbolizing the helplessness of one person alone against his oppressors. The chair. The chair is empty, for they are not here. The cloth. The cloth is white, for the purity of their intentions in responding to their country's call to arms. The napkin. The napkin is black symbolizing the black hearts of some of our leaders and politicians who abandoned and forgot them. The glass. The glass will be inverted, for they cannot toast with us. The lemon. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. The salt. The salt is symbolic of the tears shed by those who wait. The rose. 
The single red rose in a vase reminds us of the families and loved ones who have kept faith awaiting the return of our POW MIAs. The ribbons, the red, yellow, and black ribbons represent the ribbons and symbols worn upon the lapels and breasts of thousands who bear witness to our nation's unyielding determination to demand proper accounting of our POW MIAs. The Bible. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain those families and loved ones that were lost in our country, founded as one nation under God. The candle. The candle is the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home out of the hands of their oppressors. Remember, we all call them comrades, brothers, sisters, friends. We speak for them because they cannot speak for themselves. Do not let them be forgotten, for surely they have not forgotten us. Our mission as members of Rolling Thunder is to publicize the POW MIA issue, to educate the public of the fact that many American prisoners of war were left behind after all past wars, to help to crest the past to protect future veterans from being left behind should they ever become prisoners of war or missing in action. We are also dedicated to honoring the memory of all those that paid the ultimate sacrifice to secure our freedom. We would also like to remind everyone that every day, 22 veterans lose their battles to post-traumatic stress on American soil. That is one American every 65 minutes. If you know a someone that is struggling, please reach out, offer them help. When the American is not worth the effort to be saved, we as Americans have lost. We will now pause for a moment of silence in honor of our prisoners of war and missing in action, those that were killed in action. Okay. United States Army, missing in action, 22,934. Killed in action, 379,990. United States Marine Corps, missing in action, 3,538. Killed in action, 42,810. United States Navy, missing in action, 31,757. Killed in action, 64,897. United States Air Force, missing in action, 21,325, killed in action, 3,082. United States Coast Guard, missing in action, 613. At this time, the glasses will be inverted. Okay. 
prepare to cook. I will now explain the 13 folds of the flag. The first fold of the flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. As American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in time of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. In the words of Stephen Decatur, our country. In dealing with other countries, may she always be right but is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces. It is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they are found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers, for it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great 
has been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to the Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David, King Solomon, and glorifies in Hebrew eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents the emblem of eternity and glorifies in the Christian's eyes God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. The thirteenth fold, or when the fold is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust. And the flag is completely folded and tucked in. It takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that we still have over 80,000 servicemen unaccounted for. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Rolling Thunder. Oh, please. Thank you all for joining us today. This is our annual celebration. We'll be here each spring. I hope that you will plan to join us more frequently as Honor Park has something to offer for everyone. The tranquility, the peace, the feeling of respect, and of course, the opportunity to honor those who serve. As you visit the park today, please notice all the monuments. Pay attention to the people who are here. Don Hayes with the KIA, State of Georgia, VVA 203. <coughs> Stacy Brasher with Building the Blue Bridge. People who go over and beyond to carry the torch of service. God bless you all. Please stay as long as you like and enjoy the music from the Suttles family legacy. Aren't they awesome? Yes. They'll be singing for us again. They've been practicing hard. God bless you all, and God bless those who serve. Thank you.
See you, sir. See you. Have a good day.